everybody, it's Natalina here and we're back in my kitchen with uh, beets this week. So we are pickling beets. Um, this is a old fashioned styled pickled beets recipe, um, which is what I prefer. There's not a lot of um, spices or flavoring in this. It's pretty basic. It's vinegar, sugar, water, a little bit of salt, a little bit of the beet liquid. Um, I prefer it myself that way. Uh, to me, beets are kind of more savory. The sweet sweetness adds a little bit um, of flavor if you're adding it to a salad or something like that, which is what I like to do with pickled beets. My favorite is uh, a pickled beet and goat's cheese salad uh, mixed in with baby greens with a little balsamic dressing. And I find when you have pickled beets or pickled vegetable in a salad, then you need less salad dressing. So it can be a little bit healthier. That's one of my favorite ways to eat these. And that's why um, that's why I prefer the old fashioned style with a with less, kind of less is more um, in this particular case. But there are a lot of recipes out there that have other flavorings in them. Okay, um, like our asparagus, uh, pickled asparagus recipe, we're gonna stuff our jars um, with the vegetable and then pour the liquid over top. But with this particular recipe, unlike the asparagus, we did blanch um, the beets first. Remember last time um, when we did the asparagus, I was saying asparagus is a much softer vegetable, so we want it to just really cook in the time when we process it, um, and that's all. If we were to blanch it first and then process it, which some recipes actually do, um, myself personally find that just too overcooked, okay? Um, in the case with the beets, they're really hard, so we are gonna blanch them. Okay, so let's go over that. So we'll go over the ingredients as well. So 10 pounds of local fresh beets, so these are Ontario beets, but like I'd mentioned in the Q&A on Saturday, um, they're not quite ready yet. And that was one of the challenges with doing this course was everything wasn't gonna be ready exactly when we needed it, but I did find a source of Ontario um, beets from last year's harvest, because this year's harvest isn't ready yet. Although everything I look at says beets are in June, but clearly it's a little bit later in June, okay? So let me grab a couple of tools. Oh, actually there's a knife right there I can show you. Okay, so. We've got 10 pounds of beets. I washed them, I trimmed off the ends, <coughs> excuse me, and then I put them in a big pot, covered them in water, brought them up to a boil until they were fork tender. So what that means is fork or knife, so in this case a knife, you can place it and it goes in quite easily so you know it's cooked, okay? You don't want them too, too soft because they are gonna process um, in the water bath again, okay? And um, I've already, um, washed, boiled, peeled, and quartered these here. But I did leave one with the skin on because I wanted to show you. Um, the skin doesn't always come off super easily. So let me grab a paper towel here and I'll show you. So in a perfect world, um, what you do is you take off, after, after they're cooled, after you've poured the water out, you take off the end. I like to take off a little bit of the top as well. And then if you just press it with your thumb, it comes off really easily. I find my thumbs get really sore though after a while, and um, this one's actually not too bad. I found um, some of them, if they have a really um, tough edge on them, sometimes around the core, um, they're harder to get off. Okay, so in an ideal world, you want them just to peel off nice and easily. I find them when they're warmer, this has cooled off now somewhat because I had to get ready um, to videotape and get everything ready here. Um, it's cooled off quite a bit. Um, although it is, it's actually not bad. It's coming off pretty easily. But if you can't, if you can't get it off really easily, if you have some tough bits, or if you just have, you know, bad hands, um, like I said, my hands get sore lately. I have my peeler here, and I'll just show you. You could very easily go in. I had washed it, and I hadn't used it yet, so there you go. So if you cut off. A little bit of the top and a little of the bottom like I showed you and then if you go up one of these peelers works really well because it'll take just a tiny tiny bit which is what you want okay so you can do that and if you just want to take the easy route and just do that right from the get-go I had a chef once show me with a rag so I said that and then you could have a piece of a rag or even a piece of a paper towel and and that also helps you not get the, the purple on your hands and it just kind of but it, it's really it's kind of the same same thing as doing it just with your bare thumb it still requires a lot of pressure on your thumb um, so to be honest with you I go through if it doesn't come off super super easy I just use the peeler and I just get it you can see where it's more dull now where there's skin left and where there is none 
So there we go. So that's done. Okay, and then I like to quarter them. You can slice them if you wish. So just um, you could just use a cutting board and just slice them. I wouldn't slice them too thin though. I'd do them about a good half to three quarters of an inch. Or you can just um, quarter them, which is what I've done here. Okay, so there we go. We've got all those ready. Let me just wipe off my hands. Okay, and then as usual, um, well actually let me, sorry, let me continue with the ingredients and then we'll go back to the jars. Okay, so we've got our 10 pounds of local fresh beets and they can be mixed colors or one color. I like if you can get mixed ones, they always look pretty in the jar. Um, but these are all red, obviously. Okay, then we've got four cups of distilled white vinegar, which is just your regular vinegar. We've got two cups of white sugar. Um, I have two cups of the liquid reserved from uh, the beets that we boiled them in, okay? I actually put aside a little bit of extra water as well, just in case, because you always, um, you can never get it bang on for the number of jars you have or how much liquid you need, so I, re I just reserve a little bit. So if I need to, in a pinch, if I need to make up some more um, pickling liquid. And then last but not least, one tablespoon of pickling salt. Okay, so just your coarse pickling salt. Okay, so that's all ready. Um, and then of course, we've got our jars. So just like every time, I've already sanitized the jars in the um, canning pot. These are 500 milliliter. The recipe calls for seven. I always do a little extra because we all know again, and it's mostly, it's because, um, I mean, these were medium size to large beets. If you had smaller beets, you're gonna be, um, you may not get, you may fit more in because they're smaller, you may fit less depending on the sizes, et cetera, or depending on how well you pack them in too, okay? So I do a few extras. Um, with my canning rack in this pot, this is the same pot we've used um, every week that I've used every week. I've got it on the side where I can fit seven 500 milliliter jars, but I've got another pot over there um, with water in it starting to boil. So if I have a couple of extras, I can just easily pop them in there and um, put them in a separate water bath. Or I, you know, you could do it in two, two turns if you wanted once the first batch was done, take them out and then do the second. I have a couple of pots, so I've got another one going in case I have access. Okay, so let's get our liquid ready while we're waiting for, um, actually we're not really waiting for anything. I have the water on here, but I don't really need it on yet. So, okay, so, so reserve two cups of the cooking liquid. We did that. Um, meanwhile, combine the vinegar, um, beet water. So that's all going to go into a medium size pot. So let me turn that on. Spoon, our two cups of sugar. That's just our white sugar. I'm going to dissolve that in there. It already smells good in here. Our two cups of reserved beet water. And not all recipes do that. I like um, I like to do that. And just simply, whenever you boil a vegetable, the salt's going to go in now too. Whenever you boil a vegetable, of course, a lot of the vitamins and minerals are released into the water. So rather than using just tap water or just plain water, we're going to use two cups of that liquid. It also um, it also makes for a darker liquid in there, but I think more importantly, you get some of those vitamins and minerals that would have normally just been washed away. Okay, so we're going to put this into the saucepan, stir and bring to a boil, and then reduce to simmer on low heat. Okay, so I've got this on high heat right now. I'll just give it a stir every once in a while. When it comes up to a boil and the sugar's all dissolved, then we'll just turn that down, okay? In the meantime, we can start to get our jars ready. Well, I've got all my tools ready nearby, just like every week. So I've got mostly standard jars. I do have one wide mouth as well in the 500 ml. They should all, um, the beads should all pretty much fill up pretty easily though. Not like the asparagus where I preferred the uh, wide mouth. And remember too, um, for those of you with old jars like me, you always want to check these. So if you missed it when you were washing, just make sure. I'm a little paranoid now after that first week when I missed the one little nick in it. And sometimes you can check them and when you sanitize them, they might hit something and actually get a little nick in them too. So, okay. So while we're waiting for our liquid, I can see there's still some sugar in there. If it hasn't dissolved, let's give it a little stir and then let's just fill up our jars real quick. So I'm gonna just kind of randomly fill them and then I'll give them a little tap 
I just kind of want to see where I'm at. Whoops, just in case I do need some more um, jars. So this is the first time we've been running this course and a lot of these recipes, this is an old fashioned one that's kind of been handed down that I've done. But um, like I said, you could, your amount of beets can vary a little bit every time. And then, you know, sometimes you end up making a little bit more liquid or you could just pop them in the fridge and just use them up this week, right? Which actually, I love beets. I like to add them to my healthy bowls as well when I layer lettuce and quinoa and veggies and protein. Um, one of my favorite lunches. I always love to put beets in those. So if I have any left, I might even just pop them in the fridge and not worry about uh, making up some more liquid. So you can see, it's always easier to fill these wide mouth ones just because they don't have that little shoulder on there. They are more expensive though and the snap lids are a little bit more expensive too. So um, yeah, so I wouldn't run out and just buy some just because they're easier. When I first started canning, like when I first got married over 30 years ago, actually we just celebrated our anniversary 33 years. So I kind of started um, canning. We got married in June so I, I think I, I canned that first summer because you know, I was married now. That's what you did back then in the 80s, right? Was you canned, right? Like my mom did. So, but anyways, um, I ran out and grabbed the regular uh, jars. But I'm pretty sure in 87 when I got married, I don't even think there were wide mouth. I think those came along kind of later on. I like um, the one liter wide mouth. So the full size one liter wide mouth. Um, for my plum tomatoes, when later in the season, when we get into the tomatoes, when we get into canning tomatoes, when we do the peeled and plum, whole plum tomatoes, um, I like to use the wide mouth jars for that. And the reason is, is if I want to puree those, if I want kind of a chunky sauce with the, with the whole plum tomatoes, I can actually fit my immersion blender right into the wide mouth jar. And that's the reason why I like to use them. It's just less mess. Right? Nobody likes to make more mess than they have to. I'm all for making as least mess as possible. So that's why I like them for that. And then the pureed tomatoes, or the passata, as we call it, which is just your tomato coulis or your pureed tomato that we're also going to do in this class later in the summer. I like to put those in the regular mouth jar because it's just a puree. So it's easy to put in, it's easy to take out. Um, okay. And of course, we get the nice purple hands. And I can see that that brining liquid is coming up. So, oh, and actually, my other pot's boiling. Let me turn that off. So you can see I've filled. I might have a couple room, and I do have oh, quite a actually quite a number there. So you know what? I might actually grab a couple more jars. And if I don't have enough liquid, then I'll decide whether I'm gonna make some more liquid or whether I'm gonna just pop those in the fridge. So it's not quite up to a boil, so let me grab another jar. Actually, I have small ones here. Okay, I'm gonna step in from the other room and grab some real quick. Two more 500 ml jars, quick soapy water here. They're all clean anyways, but I'm gonna quick put them in soapy water, give them a quick rinse, and then I'm gonna sanitize them real quick. Canning's a little easy. It's never an exact, I mean the recipes are exact, but how much you get is never exact. So I'm just gonna boil those while we're finishing here. Okay. So this is still, we're waiting that to come up to a boil, but you can see the steam coming off, so it's pretty close. Um, one thing I like to do is, I don't know if you can see this, but let me move this so you can. I'm gonna put a cloth here, and then if you give them a little tap, that'll move them down, and you'll find that there's more room then to pop another one in. This one, um, this recipe, after we pour the liquid in, we only need a quarter inch of headspace. 
so we don't need that much so you could tap a few more and you can see just that little tapping see how it just moves them down and I well I put two more I think in there since we started so um, and it's only a quarter inch so let's see if I can get another one in there actually I can it always surprises me it's like packing right you know when you're packing your suitcase and you think it's full and then you move a few things around and you fit some more stuff in there right okay so yeah you just want to make sure you have something on the counter to kind of absorb that I think that is going to be good because by the time you put our liquid in Excited. I got my new wood-fired oven today. I'm going to tell you guys about that just while I'm doing this. So if you follow me on the regular Facebook page, you would have saw that I had, well, by the time you see this Friday, today is Wednesday. So I got my new wood-fired oven. So I'm a new dealer for the Fontana Forney, which is the, mod, the brand of the oven, wood-fired oven that I've had for the last four years. So we're going to, a lot of my clients seem to be interested in them. So got a single chamber style which is more your traditional pizza oven so I'm really excited because the other one I have is a dual chamber which is more similar to a regular oven like with the, the fire is a separate compartment so this is more like a pizza style you know with the fire right in there and you gotta get in there so I'm really excited about that today I think tomorrow we're gonna have pizza for dinner in the new oven so I'm hoping it doesn't rain so if you're interested in uh, seeing that just keep an eye on my Facebook page because I'm going to be running a wood-fired um, cooking class as well for those that are interested so if you have a wood-fired oven it could be a homemade oven or um, or it could be um, one like my own or the little mini ones it could be anything so it's kind of a new thing that a lot of people are interested in it's really fun so I'm experimenting with lots of new recipes so always something exciting. Actually, because I'm not touring this year, I'm around so much more, so I have time. That was something I was kind of wanted to do. Um, so I have a bit more time this year to do that. So you know what? It's not all bad. The COVID thing is not all bad. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would say they're probably less stressed being at home. Time with family and friends is always good everyone's health is most important and that's the most important thing that everybody's healthy so that is actually still not come up to a boil it's close though i think it's just little bubbles starting but actually you can see how much because when i first filled these i thought wow i got a lot of these left and then it never seems to amaze me once you start doing this and squeezing them in like you can see like there's a big space right there but just because of the the kind of shape of these it doesn't look like it's going any further so let's see so here i thought i was going to have all kinds of extra and i don't think that's the case anymore i think i am going to get 10 though so if you only had prepared um seven jars then you might want to prepare a few more or just be prepared to have a little bit of extra that you can pop into your fridge And if you had just a little bit of brine, you could always just put whatever brine you had on them and pop them in the fridge if they're not totally covered and you'll still get a little bit of that pickled flavor. You could always, um, if you have a little bit of brine and if it's just, if it's not quite enough to cover, you could always just add um, a little bit of boiling water to whatever you have just to extend it and bring it to a boil. It'll be a little weaker than the other stuff, but if it, I mean, if it's really close, if you're just short a little bit rather than making some new stuff for like the last jar. And there we go. You guys can't see that now because I put those jars there. I always have to think about it. where the camera is. Okay. So if you're using little miniature beads, you might find they're totally different than what, even though it's 10 pounds, you might find it's just totally different to what I'm doing here because mine were a larger size, okay? And then also too, if you're using all wide mouth, um, 
jars. Again, you're going to find it different because you might actually fit um, more in because you don't have a little shoulder. And actually, this is, these are not moving down much. I think that's it. That's it. But I'm going to fit in that one. So I have, I probably have enough here for like one more jar. But like I said, I'm just, rather than um, make up some new liquid and prepare another jar, I'm just going to, um, mind you, I do have that one jar. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the one jar, the extra jar that I made. If I need it, it's there. I can decide after, but I'm not going to hold it. We're going to carry on. So, okay. So this is now, okay. Now it's boiling. We're going to bring that down to a simmer. And then in this pot, I've got all my new snap lids. So I've got 10 snap lids. Oh, and actually I'm gonna need um, one wide one. So I've got 10 standard. I'm gonna throw in one wide mouth and I'm gonna put it on, on high heat. Just remember, just with a little bit of water, right? We're just gonna heat those up. Okay, now this is definitely rolling boil here. And that's what we want. So we can turn that down to simmer. And now we're just going to bring these closer. Okay, so we've got our 10 jars. We're going to need this to remove bubbles. We're going to need a clean tea towel to wipe the edge. We're going to need our ladle, so just get all our tools ready. And we're going to need our little magnet to pick up our lids. And then we're going to need our rings. So here we are. We've got one wide mouth and this for all regular. Let me grab a clean tea towel to wipe. silicone mitt just if it gets hot and our window so here we are so our lids aren't quite up to a boil yet So remember, we need a quarter inch of head space. I'm going to fill these, and then I'll check them, and I'll adjust them. I want to address um, the fruit, or the vegetable in this case that is not covered by the liquid after you preserve it. Because a few people had questions about the asparagus when we did it. Okay, so when we're filling these, we want everything covered in there. And actually that's gonna need a little bit more. I'll just use these as an example. Then we want to make sure that we have a quarter inch of headspace. So with our little tool, right, we're measuring, okay. So this liquid can actually go a little bit higher let me turn off our lids. There we go. So this is this is now bubbling with our snap lids. I'm gonna pour a little bit of that water in, and I'll just keep them there on the burner to stay warm. Okay. So, um, anyways, we want to make sure that everything's covered, and that the appropriate headspace, in this case, a quarter inch, is there. Now, some of you were saying your asparagus were exposed. Um, even though you did, you know, check this and watch the quarter inch um, headspace because it was the same on that one. So I did a little more research on that too because I wanted to just to see if there was anything else you could do. And the suggestion from Bernardin is um, it's not just actually that stage. It's very, very important when you process your jars. Um, you know, I've told you that 
So you process them for the recommended time, then you turn off uh, the heat and the bubbles subside and you wait a few minutes till you take them out. It seems that if you take them out too quickly, that can affect the pressure in the can and then the liquid can go down. So again, so all these steps, and I know that some of them seem really trivial, they all kind of contribute to the end result, okay? So, I mean, who would have known that that could actually contribute to that? Because I know myself sometimes, like some of my jars, um, you know, I'll go back in the root cellar to get them once they're all cooled and everything and they are exposed a little bit more. So apparently, if you take them out of the water too quickly, that can affect that, okay? so. We want to turn off the water, wait a good five minutes for them to settle, then take them out carefully and leave them upright. That can also affect it. Okay, so there is a, you know, a tried and true method to this um, that can affect that. So we want to make sure then when they cool off, they're staying upright, they're not on their side. And I usually leave them, I usually leave them like overnight, overnight or even a whole 24 hours on the counter before I move them and then I bring them into my root cellar. Okay, so, and that's another thing about having a group like this. It's questions like that. Like I said, we all kind of learn from each other. Um, I find that, I find that to be in a community is, is the best way to learn. Because I find chances are, if you have a question, if something happens to you, chances are it's happened to somebody else. Um, and there's different levels of experience. I love, um, I love when people chime in and say, well, you know, my mom, you know, who's, you know, an hour in her 80s and canning for years, you know, this is what she used to do. Um, yeah, I love that because that's probably where a lot of this stuff came from was from experienced, um, people canning in their home, right? So, okay. My mom did do some pickles. She didn't do asparagus or beets, though. She did more like the jardinetta or um, eggplant, but we did that under oil. We didn't do it in a pickling liquid like this. So, of course, different uh, cultures, different nationalities do a lot of things. There wasn't, a, yeah, there wasn't a lot of pickling. Maybe just the jardinetta. That's why I was saying I've never done pickles before. So maybe this year. Um, I know. One of the ladies, I think Gloria said that she had a great family pickle recipe that she could share with us. So maybe she shares that. Maybe, um, maybe I'll make that and share the recipe. And for those of you that have experience, you can share with us and give us all your tips how to make keep them nice and crunchy. I love crunchy pickles. I don't like them soft. Um, Right now we have a jar of pickles going in the fridge because I love them on hamburgers in the summer when we're barbecuing hammers. And um, what are the ones? Are the Clausens the ones that are advertised that are super, super crunchy? And they really are. Like you bite into them and they're so crunchy. I wish that we could do something like that. So if someone's got a recipe for super crunchy pickles like that, that would be awesome. And it looks like I do have um, quite a bit of liquid here. So I'm gonna have to top these up. And then that way, like I said, if I did have enough liquid, I might do that last jar. So, and that's that's the thing about canning. You just kind of improvise, you kind of uh, you kind of go with the flow. And then, like I said, even if, if it's not enough liquid, then I'll then rather than put it in the canner, I'll just put it in the fridge and I'll use it up. So, okay. So now, and again, I know you can't see me, so let me move these there. Okay, so now we want to take our non-metal tool and we want to get rid of our air bubbles. Oh, it's kind of, you got to be careful though too, because you don't want to disturb. I might have to actually fish out one of these. Whoops. And so I'm going between the beets and the jar to release any air pockets, okay? And then now you can see the beets are exposed. And actually with the um, wide mouth, it's hard actually to get them to, 
to stay right in. But let me check our headspace. So we're actually we're actually more like a half. regretting using the wide mouth for this one now because they seem to be flowing up a little bit more so okay I might actually do you know what I'm gonna use this as a test so this is the only wide mouth because my sense is telling me to switch this to a regular mouth just so that the shoulders will kind of keep it down, but let's use this as a test. So the beats are not covered. The head space is still a quarter inch. So it's a quarter inch, but this is coming up a little bit higher, but you see what I mean? They don't stay down because of the wide mouth. Let's see what happens with this one. If it seals, let's see, let's use it as a test. Let's see if it seals. Let's see if the liquid goes uh, lower because of that. Let's just use it as a test. Like I said, my instinct was to switch it, but um, let me wipe that. But let's use it as a learning tool. I'm willing to sacrifice one of my jars of beets. If it doesn't seal, I'll just put it in the fridge. So, okay, there we go. Okay, so finger tight, right? Not too tight. So that one's ready to go. So that'll be our tester. Okay, so these other ones now go and actually that was a I wish you guys could have seen that bubble escape so that was a good example of releasing air when I did that I went in between the jar and the beads and a nice big bubble escaped okay now let's press those down see now see on the one with the shoulders just the the shoulders which are the little round parts on the jar right they kind of just hold it hold it all in place. That's why I kind of like them better for this, but okay. So it looks like we need a little top up. About like that. Go in and test. And actually we need a time button. Okay, so we're gonna go through and you're gonna test them all, right? We're gonna Oh, I just got a whiff of that vinegar. There's our jar. Finger tight. Okay, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna do that all, right? You guys don't need to have me see do all of that. Maybe I'll just do one more. We'll check the air bubbles. Remove that so you guys can see. I wish I had another one that had a nice big bubble in it that I could show you. Oh, actually a bubble just escaped again now, but it's always on my side when it happens. So, and I don't know whether you guys would be able to see it. And actually there's an air bubble right down there. I don't know if you can see it. And I have to get between the jar. Oh, there we go. Once you get between the jar and the beat, then it just kind of floats up and it lets out the air. Okay, so all the air bubbles are gone. Let's check our headspace. Whoops, our headspace. So we've got quite a bit more to add to this one. I love the color of the water, so pretty. Okay, and a little bit more still. It's perfect. You get that you can just eyeball it and you'll know. Oh, I didn't wipe it. Again, this is a really thin liquid, not like the jam or like a relish, so less likely to impede our seal, but still, we want to wipe it. Sometimes, too, if you have little bits of an herb, like dill or something like that, believe it or not, it's just a little tiny bit of dill that doesn't get wiped off, off of the jar can cause it not to seal. Okay, so there we go. We've got three all sealed, or rather with the lids on. And now those are gonna go, so our canning liquid 
has already come to a boil. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all these. I'll do this after we're gone. But these are going to go back in here. I've got that one jar in here that I didn't know if I needed or not. Or two jars, I guess. Let me pop those out. Okay. Now, this is going to go in. Oh, actually, let me use my jar lifter. It's better. So because I have 10 jars here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put seven of the standard mouth in this canner with the rack because I won't be able to put um, I won't be able to put six standard and one of the wide mouth. The wide mouth is going to have to go in my other pot. So because I have 10, I'm going to put seven regular um, 500 ml mason jars in here. I'll put the one wide mouth and the two regulars in the other pot. Okay. And now these are going to be uh, processed. These are processed for 30 minutes, okay? So they're gonna cook a little bit more. Um, even though they're fork tender, they're still firm. So they're gonna cook a little bit more and then they'll become softer, okay? Um, so a full 30 minutes from the boil, then just as I mentioned, we're gonna turn it off, let it all settle for a good five minutes, then carefully remove them, leave them upright for 24 hours. And then we're going to tuck them away on the shelf. And I don't know about you, but um, those of you that have been making all the recipes as we go along, I did an extra jam. I did that spreadable fruit. I know some of you did as well. This will be the fourth thing I add to my shelf um, tomorrow. So I'm getting really excited. I love watching the shelf kind of fill up. I'm actually thinking that this year, because this year I'm doing a little more canning than I have in a while, I might actually have to get myself some more jars. So um, I think I'm going to hit up some family members because I know some of them are no longer canning and they have some jars hanging around. So that will be my first stop before I have to run out and buy some. So I hope this inspires you to pickle some beets, maybe even if you've never done it before. Um, really easy. Um, probably the hardest thing about this was peeling them. Peeling them wasn't a lot of fun. Um, for those of you that, um, you know, by the time you're watching this haven't done that, I found to peel these, it probably took me like a good 20 minutes. So um, the actual job itself, like the other ones, didn't take very long, um, under an hour, I would say, but the, the peeling did. So what I did was while we were eating dinner, I had them cook while we were eating dinner. I went in and checked them. After dinner, I just dumped them in the sink. I put some good music on and away I went. I peeled them, cubed them all up and then got everything ready to go. And then once you have everything ready to go, just like the other canning projects, it goes pretty quickly. Okay, so I better finish these up and get them in the canner. So hope you all enjoy this recipe and we will talk to you Saturday morning at 10 with a, another Q&A. We didn't have many questions last week. Um, uh, we had a few on the jam. This is similar again to the asparagus, so there may not be a lot of questions, but I'm there for you if you have any. Okay, have a great night. Thank you.